Hello and welcome to another episode of Monster Model Review. In this episode, we'll be taking a flashback to our model citizen days with uh, me building a base for the Curse of the Werewolf sculpted by Mike Hill. This is going to be a two-part episode. Obviously, uh, this, this week I'll be building the back wall, and then in part two, which will be next week, I'll be detailing the base. All right, what I'm going to be doing for this segment is I'm going to be building a base to complement my Curse of the Werewolf kit. Um, this was sculpted by Mike Hill. Um, what I've done is I've decided that I already want to use the base that came with it because it has a has a nice little nameplate built into it. And what I ran into for a problem right away is on the base here it didn't extend far enough back to put a wall without this back leg hitting it. So what I had to do is I just took a little epoxy putty and I added it onto the back and extended the bottom of the base out. Um, what I'm going to be concentrating more on than anything for this segment is a construction of the back wall for the base. One good product to use, especially when building a brick wall, is a product called balsa foam. Um, balsa foam is uh, available in hobby stores, and, and it's uh, it's a rigid foam, but it also allows you to sculpt and uh, shape it, which is which is very good. Like when say you're wanting to do a a stone effect. All right. So now when you're ready to, uh, you have the height of your base figured out and everything, um, what you want to do then is scribe your line. So I'm just giving you an example here. You can just scribe your line in of however angle you want. And then taking your hobby knife, you're going to press down on where your scribe line is, but don't try to press through all the way because what that's going to do is it's just going to bust the balsa foam away. What you want to do is just follow on your scribe line scribe line, adding more and more pressure as you go along. Your knife will pretty much follow in the natural line of what you started on your first cut. And there you go, it'll bust off, you'll have a nice clean break line. As to oppose if you were to try to press down and do it in one shot, what would happen is it would most likely bust and splinter off. All right, uh, I've got the shape cut out that I want to use for the base. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to come in and scribe all the brick mortar lines into our material. Now one thing you're going to need for this is a straight edge and uh, some kind of tool to score the balsa foam with. Um, as far as doing the mortar lines, you don't have to get too exact. Um, you can measure them up if you want. I'm just kind of picking a point on my ruler and using that as my as my guideline. So you'll just go ahead and do this for the rest of the rest of the mortar lines. All right, now that we've got these lines scribed in, what we're going to do is we're going to come in and deepen the mortar lines because we're going to seal this up. With a, with a sealer as soon as we get done doing the mortars. So what you just want to do is come in and deepen them up just a, just a, just a little bit. So you can add a little bit more detail into it. All right, now that we've got the mortar lines deepened, what we have to come do now is add the alternate mortar lines. And what you're going to want to do on this one is just same thing, eyeball them up. And one thing you got to remember to do is to alternate. One here, skip this one. One here, skip this one. One here. And then we'll add our next one. And now we'll come into the next block and add their alternating lines. All right, so finishing our process the whole way through, what we end up with on our base then is what looks to be stone blocks. Um, one thing to remember is too, is as you can see, I haven't finished it through all the way and that's something you want to do is finish your line all the way through to the other end just to give it a little bit for a better finished look. To add a stone texture to our back wall, there's a couple different ways we can go about it. One way is to take aluminum foil and ball it up 
really tight. And what you want to do is make uneven edges around it. And then you can just roll it across the balsa foam to create a texture to it. I don't like doing that because what happens is, is your ball of uh, aluminum foil runs out and you have to do it again. And, you know, you just keep using aluminum foil. What I like to use is a rock. Yeah, that's right, a rock. Um, and make sure when you get a rock, you have a rock that has, uh, you know, is like busted and has a bunch of different textures to it, which this rock has. One, it'll never wear out on you. And two, it's just, it, you can press down a little bit harder on the foam. So what you want to do is just take it and just start pressing into the stone or into the balsa foam to create your stone effect. Just uh, make sure to work your, work your mortar lines and just press it in, you know, move the rock around. Don't keep pressing with the same side to get your, to get your texture down. And you just keep doing this and working it in until you're done or until you're satisfied with the with the texture you have in your base. Another thing to remember is to keep consistent with your stonework and follow along the outsides, even rough, even rough that up. And if you want to take it and really put some bite into the sides so it really chews it out, that'll give it a more of a crumbled look if that's what you're going for, or you know. Be very light if you don't want a very heavy stonework wall. All right, now that we've got all our stonework and texture laid in, what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to seal the balsa foam. Even though it's still a fairly hard medium, balsa foam, you know, is soft enough to sculpt. So unfortunately, when uh, we put our diorama on display, you know, something could run into it and you know damage the balsa foam. Um, there are a couple different ways to seal up balsa foam. A product I like to use is something I found the other day at Michael's. It's a fabric stiffener called, don't laugh, it's called Stiffy. Um, I've used this and I really like it because it soaks well into the balsa foam and it also hardens it up very ni to a nice rigidity. Um, I don't know if you would want to actually, if you're going to use the stonework for bottom of a base, you know, I haven't tried it to secure to the bottom of a figure but I, I wouldn't see anything wrong with that either because it gets a nice nice hard finish to it and uh, what's really nice about this stuff is it's water soluble so it's non-toxic unlike resin you're you're dealing with uh, very very toxic fumes with resin and it's it's easy cleanup everything is water based so you can use it right out of the bottle the you just just get yourself a brush just start brushing it off and uh, what it does is uh, being that this is a foam it soaks up the stiffy and not only seals and protects but uh, also prepares the surface for painting for you. I usually put on a good three four coats of this to get it sealed up nice. You might want to use more um, you could use less but I really wouldn't recommend using less than four four coats on this. So we'll just go ahead and seal up our base. I'm going to take the time and put on uh, three other coats and then I'm going to go ahead and paint this piece and we'll come back and do final assembly and we'll see you in a bit.